We have multiple witnesses saying it's a, a shooter at Greenock Place. Three people are dead, three more wounded after shootings across two states. And at this hour, there is a multi-state manhunt for the man the police say is responsible. This person is still dangerous. He's armed, he's desperate. As we come on the air, critical new details about the suspected gunman and where he might be headed. From News Channel 8, this is a breaking news alert. A manhunt is underway tonight as police try to track down a mass shooter responsible for killing three people at an Edgewood, Maryland business and for another shooting a short time later in Delaware. We'll take a good look at your screen right now. This is the man the police are searching for. His name is Radi Prince. We're going to have live team coverage tonight. We're going to get to that in a moment, but we're going to start with our first forecast. Meteorologist Josh Knight is standing by with more. Hey, Lindsay, and for a lot of us now, we're uh, watching the sunset here in just about 25 minutes. And what that means is we're going to go from around 70 or the mid 60s down into the 50s here. Now, it's not going to cool as quickly as it has the last few evenings, but still, you're going to want that jacket here pretty soon. Right now, your feels like temperature a little bit cooler there where we're looking toward Dulles, but Reagan National, we're at 67, 68 for Quantico, 68 in Warrington, around 66 for Fredericksburg. So most of us hanging around that same spot where it still feels pretty nice, but again, give it about another hour, a very quickly start to have a bit more of a chill in the air. But I do want to point out compared to where we were yesterday, how much warmer we actually are. Winchester, seven degrees warmer. Dulles, we're six degrees warmer. Manassas, the same spot. So for everybody, again, it's just not going to be quite as chilly this evening as it has been the last couple. So a bit more comfortable. As we work our way throughout the evening, we're hanging in the 60s and then into the 50s. And with that, we've got a clear and cool sky sticking around for us. And then heading into tomorrow, that's when temperatures work their way Way back up to about the low to mid 70s. Same story for us as we work our way into Friday. Right now, a manhunt is stretching up and down the Northeast Corridor, a hunt for a man accused of killing three co-workers in Maryland, wounding two others before opening fire again in Delaware. And police say that this is the suspected gunman still on the run right now, armed and unhinged. Tonight, our I-team is discovering warning signs, dozens of them that were missed. We have team coverage from throughout the region, and we begin with Maryland Bureau Chief Brad Bell. He's in Edgewood where this all began. Brad. Yeah, Lindsay, terrible. Another mass shooting in America, a workplace shooting. This one really literally almost in our own backyard, just about 20 miles north of Baltimore. It happened here at this business. It's called Advanced Granite Solutions, and we can show you some video of the scene this morning from Skytrack 7 and when police were just all over the place here. And this is the narrative as, as we've been able to piece together through the day. I'm um, talking to relatives of those who survived it and, and witnesses as well. So at just about 9 a.m., 8.58 this morning, it is alleged that this man, Prince, Mr. Prince, arrived here for his regularly scheduled shift. And we are told that he went back to the shop where he worked, he ran a machine, and, and told some of his coworkers, hey, come together, I want to talk to you, I want to have a meeting. And that is when we are told that he opened fire. Again, hitting five people here. Three are deceased, two remain in critical condition. The shock trauma center in Baltimore. This is what one of the witnesses and the sheriff here told us about the shooting. I was listening to it all happening from the front of my office. It was right out in front of my office. I heard all the screaming, all the running, all the jumping. He's an armed uh, killer out there, so certainly uh, he is a danger to anyone he encounters. So we should be aware, and there's, he, he's mobile. So police say that he is still mobile and they are still putting the lookout for that vehicle that he was last seen driving. And it is a 2008 GMC Acadia. It is black in color. The Acadia is a is a midsize SUV. It has Delaware tags and the tags are PC64273. Now authorities believe that at this point he has probably ditched that car. but. They don't know. They do not have this man in custody, and he could be anywhere, and certainly he has to be considered a danger. Now, in just the last hour or so, we witnessed a really 
tough scene here. Uh, a lot of the employees who ran for their lives this morning were allowed by police to come back, get their belongings, get their cars. They were still in tears. They were still hugging, none of them wanting to talk about it on camera. But I did have an opportunity to speak to one of the survivors, someone who saw the shooting off camera. And he told me that this man, Prince, who'd only worked here a few months, was someone to be avoided. He said he just was not getting along with his co-workers. In Edgewood, Brad Bell, News Channel 8. And as the shots rang out inside that granite company, neighbors immediately knew something was wrong. We spoke with one woman who looked out her window and saw a man fleeing for his life. And he was walking and looking over his shoulder, and then he stopped. And I opened the door and I said, can I help you? Do you, do you need something? And he just like didn't answer me really, but was like shaking. He was scared. I mean, his eyes are like wide open and he kept looking back. Well, the shooting sent nearby schools into lockdown for more than an hour. Tonight, the lockdowns are lifted, but the frazzled nerves are far from gone. Tonight, we're also learning more about that second crime scene. It's across the border in Delaware, and police say that that is where the gunman drove next, confronted a man that he knew, and then shot him in the head. Kevin Lewis is picking up our coverage from there. Kevin. And Lindsay, when police arrived at this Wilmington used car lot, they actually spotted Ray D. Prince driving away, but they lost him during a short pursuit about half a mile from here. This as the male gunshot victim this evening is alive and talking. It's tense around Ray D. Prince's apartment in Elkton, Maryland, a tiny town near the Delaware line. Today, a swarm of officers, many with bulletproof vests, kept watch at a distance. Neighbors in disbelief. I was like, what? He's my neighbor? Dewey Phelps lives next door to the wanted killer. I've been beat up, hit, ran over, shot, stabbed, hit with two by fours, baseball bats. Not much scares me. What scares me is somebody like him that has the mentality of just going off, boom. After shooting five co-workers at that granite warehouse in Harford County, police say Prince drove to Wilmington, where he shot a sixth person at this used car lot. The male victim hit twice, once in the head, is still alive. This as police swarm the Northeast Corridor. In fact, we spotted around a dozen unmarked police cars parked along I-95, presumably keeping watch for Prince's black SUV. He comes home from work, you just wave to him. Neighbor Charles Givens hoping for a quick outcome. It's just something that's not normal here, but something that's probably normal in the world. And since our last report at five, I spoke off camera with a woman who's known Rady Prince since he was a child. And she told me, I'm quoting here, he is a firecracker if you tick him off. We're live in Wilmington, Delaware. I'm Kevin Lewis, News Channel 8. Certainly concerning, Kevin. Thank you. And our 7 on your side I team has been digging through the suspected gunman Rady Prince's past all day long. They have found a long criminal history filled with warnings over his rage. Investigative reporter Scott Taylor is joining us live from the newsroom with what he's uncovered so far. Scott. Lindsay, we do know about his 42 arrests in Delaware, a lot of probation violations and 15 felony convictions, including burglary. Now we have his resume and a copy of that February restraining order. Let me break it down for you. Prince has worked at 10 jobs over the past 14 years, seven of those jobs in the state of Washington and three since he moved to Delaware back in 2014. He says he's an extremely hard worker and has won numerous awards for his work ethic. We tracked down that protection order that was filed by Prince's former boss. It says Prince was fired after punching a coworker in the face. His boss told the court he felt threatened and Prince yelled and cursed at him. I also want to mention his former boss did tell the court he didn't want to wait until Prince attacked him. So that's why he asked for protection. The judge denied that order back in February. This guy is still on the run. Scott Taylor, News Channel 8. Scott, thank you. And you can stick with News Channel 8 for breaking developments. For continuing coverage, download the ABC7 app. Just search for WJLA in the App Store or in Google Play. And switching over now to traffic, we're going to see how the roads are faring in our area. Eric Smith is monitoring all those backups in the region. Eric? 
Hey, Lindsay, it's not too great out there this evening. A lot of volume. Starting off with the Capitol Belly in Virginia, looking very heavy here in both directions for Telegraph Road. The outer loop is low all the way to this crash at St. Barnabas. Heard hard to tell what's going on here because of the bad camera, but that two, two left lanes are shut down. A possible fuel spill involved in this incident as well. Here's the inner loop out of Virginia past the American Legion Bridge, which is very slow both ways up to River Road, as you can tell here, uh, looking northbound at uh, near the 270 spur, just jam-packed either way you go. Top side delays are pretty heavy for both directions past Connecticut Avenue as well. I-270 northbound out of Clarksburg, still as slow as ever, but I want to focus on a new crash southbound in Gaithersburg. This is at right at Route 124 by the exit ramp. That exit ramp almost blocked off. A couple of cars are taking a sharp curve to take that, uh, excuse me, to take that exit southbound. The two left through lanes will get by, so this is going to be a heavy ride out of Germantown below Route 118, but uh, at least passable. And, you know, before this happened, there are no southbound volume, uh, so that is going to be a big factor. Northbound side is distracted by this as well. Of course, you've had delays going up this way either way from Rockville, but this will be a bit of a focal point for the northbound ride at the moment, so do watch out for that extra jam. 95 South Bend in Virginia is still plenty slow on its own as you head down towards the Occoquan from Springfield. 395 South Bend here past Seminary Road is still seeing plenty of volume northbound over the 14th Street Bridge. That's a jam as well. That's all from the Traffic Center. Lindsay, back to you. Eric, thank you. DC Police Chief Peter Newsham says that yesterday's scare on Howard University's campus was an actual threat. Although no gunman was roaming campus, investigators are looking into who made the call for a shooter on school grounds. DC Bureau Chief Sam Ford has the story. A day after all the commotion at Howard University, it's true there was no active shooter, but police are not upset, believing callers were in real fear. It does not appear to be a hoax. It seems like the initial caller called because they received information from a third party, so they called in good faith. The events that played out at the medical school and other buildings were triggered, we're told, by a medical student who flunked out, whom police have yet to name, but is well known around Howard for making threats. Danny had come in weeks ago and created a disturbance here, and it was the security uh, ushered him out. Stephen Whetstone, who works in the university's health sciences section, says many there were aware of the angry former student. He had made threats to come back and shoot up the testing center over at Stokes Library on the fourth floor. So he had made that kind of threat, and I think he was pretty much targeting his former classmates. Court papers show the same man subject of a stay away order from his former girlfriend, also a student, warning if petitioner alerts authorities that petitioner's sister and grandmother will be targeted. Petitioner fears for her safety. I think the person who called initially uh, believed that there could have been a problem at Howard, even though they were mistaken. This is homecoming week when many Howard alums will return to celebrate the university's 150 years. As for the former student, has he been arrested? Police spokesman told me today, no, not at this time. Reporting from Northwest Washington, I'm Sam Ford, News Channel 8. Well, we return to that breaking news in Maryland, how the Edgewood workplace shooting is rattling nerves in the neighborhood. And signs of this weekend's Marine Corps Marathon are starting to spring up right outside our studios here in Arlington. We're going to give you a sneak peek inside the perimeter. That's when we return.